Hello everyone, today we are talking about batteries and about what batteries are, specifically what is a battery cell. Well, a battery cell is an electrochemical accumulator, which means it's a black box, a magic box, into which you can put some energy. And that's it. See you next time. Battery cells come in various sizes and shapes. For example, one of the most common shapes uh, nowadays are the 18650 cells which are just steel cylinders with the battery rolled inside. In this specific case I'm holding here a INR 18650-25R battery made by Samsung. And how do you know what type of battery this is? Well, you, you have to check on the datasheet released by Samsung. So you go on the internet and type the name of the, of the cell, download the PDF and there it is. So what are the most important parameters you should check when choosing a battery? Well, in learning the chemistry and all of that stuff, you should check the voltage and the capacity of the battery, first of all. So if you ever use a battery, you know that the voltage is highest when the battery is full and lowest when it's, when it's empty, but it never gets down to nothing. So what, what does the voltage uh, written on the datasheet mean? Well, it's actually the voltage that the battery has at 50% state of charge, so when the battery is at 50% of the charge. It's usually written like this, voltage at 50% state of charge, and this part here is usually ignored because you know it's so obvious that you don't have to write it every time. And this is called the nominal voltage of the cell. Another important parameter is the, is the capacity, which is usually uh, written in milliamps hour or amps hour in case of big batteries. You might have heard the, the capacity of the batteries of cell phones report, reported in milliamps hour. In this case, this cell, this specific cell here, has a 2.5 amp hour capacity, which is obviously 2500 milliamps hour. And if you multiply the nominal voltage by the nominal capacity, you get the, nomi the nominal energy capacity of the battery. In this case, it's 3.6 by 2.5 amp hours, which is 9 watt hours of energy. The, ener the energy capacity of batteries is usually reported in watt hours just because it's a more convenient um, unit. But you can convert it to joules or joules, whatever, by multiplying by uh, 3600. So in this case, 32,400 joules, joules. I don't know. Anyway, another very important parameter you should check on the datasheet is the discharge current that the battery can handle. It is usually written in amperes on data sheets, but you might also find it uh, written by a number followed by, a, by the letter C. What does that mean? The C rate is just a constant that depends on the battery chemistry and size, and is equal to the battery capacity in amp hours divided by one hour. So it's just the capacity without the H in the end, you know. So it makes more sense to use this parameter when you're talking about batteries. So for example, if I discharge these 2.5 amp hour cells at 1C, I'm discharging, I'm taking out of the cell a current of 2.5 amps. Obviously, this means that the cell will reach the end of the discharge after one hour. That's, that's pretty obvious, right? So if I discharge, this cell at 2C, it will take half an hour to discharge completely. And vice versa, if I discharge the cell at 0.5C, it will take two hours. The battery capacity stated on the datasheet is usually related to a 1C discharge rate. That is because if you discharge the battery cell faster, which, which, which means with a higher C rate, the battery capacity is gonna be slightly lower. Also, you shouldn't take too seriously the data stated on the datasheet because the battery capacity changes greatly with various factors like uh, discharge rate, temperature, age of the cell, charging rate, resting time, a lot of factors. It's just, it's just very complex. Usually cells are not used singularly. A big exception to this rule is smartphones, obviously, which have just one cell, one lithium-based cell but they are more commonly available in battery packs, which contain more than one cell, obviously, arranged either in series or parallel, or a combination of both. So when you're looking for a battery pack, you will often see this kind of code, 
like for example 10S2P, which represents the configuration of the battery pack. 10S means that there are, te that there are 10 cells put in series, and 2P means that there are two cells put in parallel for a total of 20 cells, because it's like um, two rows of 10 cells put in parallel, okay? So how do you calculate the final bat uh, battery pack voltage and capacity? Well, it's simply 10 times the nominal voltage of one cell and twice the nominal capacity of one cell. For example, if I make a 10S2P battery pack with these cells, which I keep putting inside the box, I don't know why, I get a 36 volts 5 amp power capacity battery pack, which leads to an energy of 180 watt hours or 648,000 joules, joules. The datasheet states that this cell can be discharged continuously at 20 amps, which correspond to an 8C rating, pretty high for this kind of cell. So how does that value change when you arrange your cells in a battery pack? Well, the C rating remains the same. What changes is the meaning of the C rating, because it's related to the capacity of the battery pack instead of the single cell. So in the case of a 10S2P battery pack, the capacity of the battery pack is 5 amp hours, so 8S means 40 amps of, discharge, of maximum discharge current. I have here 40 of these batteries and I'm going to use them to make a battery pack for my electric bike and it's going to be arranged as a 8S 5P battery pack. So it's going to have a nominal voltage of about 29 volts and um, maximum constant discharge current of about 100 amps, which is a lot of current. I'm slightly oversizing the maximum discharge current because the battery is going to be enclosed in a thermically isolated uh, battery pack and there's no kind of cooling whatsoever, so having a slightly overrated maximum discharge current means that the cells um, will remain cooler during operation. Be aware also that charging current is usually much lower than discharging current and that's just because of chemistry. Just a note on safety uh, lithium-based battery cells can be quite dangerous. They usually come in this steel packaging, which makes them obviously safer, but, but they can become very dangerous if you overcharge them, over-discharge them, or you puncture them. That, that's, that's really not a good idea. There are a lot of videos on YouTube that show you what happens when you do any of these things, and it's usually not nice. Many of these experiments are performed with one single cell, but when one cell fails inside a battery pack, it's usually catastrophic and destroys the whole battery pack. This phenomenon has happened also in some Tesla cars, which use this kind of cell, and, and there's usually nothing you can do about it. Once, once the cells start catching on fire, it's uh, very hard to extinguish the fire because of chemistry. A lot of things depend on chemistry. So be aware of that if you're planning to use these cells in your projects. This one right here is another common form factor for lithium-based cells. This is called pouch, for obvious reasons. This is the shape used in cell phones. These battery cells are much more sensible to mechanical damage because they, they do not have a rigid enclosure, so you can easily bend them or crack them with your hands, which is very dangerous, obviously, don't do that. And that's because it allows you to save some space and weight in space-constrained applications, for example in cell phones, this is the standard type of battery. And as you might know, they also blow up sometimes. This, for example, as written on the cell itself, is a 3.7 volts, 6.25 amp hour battery. So this battery has a much larger capacity than the other one. The compromise for that is a much lower discharge rate. So this can be used, for example, in a power bank, which has a relatively low discharge rate, but not, for example, in an electric bike, because it will overheat and eventually explode, obviously. Lithium-based styles have this tendency to explode sometimes. When assembling a battery pack, you have essentially two options. You can solder or weld the cells together. Soldering is usually the easiest one, because it's the cheapest one and everyone can get an iron for soldering. 
but it is also the not, not the recommended one because while soldering you can overheat the battery and in the best case scenario you just ruin the capacity of the battery which becomes lower and in the worst case scenario it just blows up in your face which is not nice and you shouldn't do that so when soldering the batteries you should be aware of that possibility and try not to overheat the batteries how do you do that? well by soldering them as quickly as possible so use a low melting point solder for example and heat up a lot your soldering iron this may seem counterintuitive but the point is that you, your soldering time which will be much lower and give less time to the heat to move inside the cell. The best option is to spot well the batteries. These, these cells that I have come with a pre-welded tab on top and bottom. The problem with that is that a spot welding station is way more expensive than a, sol than a soldering iron and also it's not that easy to correctly spot weld the batteries. I'm going to be spot welding the battery for my electric bike and I'm also going to build the spot welder from an old microwave transformer and I'm going to show in a future video how to build the welder itself so if you're interested be sure to check out. This is the best option because it essentially doesn't heat up the cell and the welding ensures a very low contact resistance on the interface between the cell and the wire. I was reviewing the footage and I realized that this video might contain a lot of new information for many of you and it can be difficult to process all in, in one single video but you shouldn't worry because in the future in future videos we are going to be seeing most of this stuff in detail so if you follow my channel you're going to uh, become quite familiar with most of these concepts. See you next time.